My body is a matchstick, my soul the head, and my wood flesh is sick to be ignited. Like all men, I'm longing for his box strip to rub up against him and become lighted. Soon I'm consumed from my phosphorus head to my wooden legs, and by the end of my life, my flesh becomes soot and my smoke rises. But what of the other matches from the box which the igniter snatches? Could they not gain from the heat of my flame if never their soul on the box made its scratches? Am I made just to burn, my own fire to earn, and now self-consumed lay in ashes? Or am I a spark, a divinely appointed arc, to take the strike of his strip to the masses? We hold the fire, the light of the world, the fiery baptism, the flaming tongues of the spirit, overcoming the furnace of everlasting derision. We hold the flame of the gospel's claim that God has made eternal provisions, how deity to flesh came, the price of our sins paid in heaven and hell's most glorious collision. Now we take this furnace to the ends of the earth's surface, and all we end up asking for is a decision. To say a prayer, not a head, say yes to a list of contentions, not realizing that by making conversions instead of learners, we may be harbingers of a new circumcision. We excel in evangelism, taking those in our mission down the Roman road, across the cross bridge, over hell's hole, to the quest and destination. If you died today, where would you go? These paths and tracks we all well know. But what if our omission in the Great Commission isn't just the call to go, but is in fact that we are in remission of being called to make disciples? What if we called mankind not to a recital of claims, but to recycle the flame? Would we then begin to spread not a cycle of one-on-one -on -one exchange, but a revival, an exponential change? For as the light was leaving earth and let out one last exclaim, it wasn't a call to make conversions, but disciples to share the blaze. If my body is a matchstick and my soul the head, then when I light you, you have been converted. But when I place you next to more sticks waiting to be kindled, you haven't just been made a Christian, but have been discipled. And if you do the same with the content of your flame, passing it on to be passed on, then from brother to brother we'll keep igniting another and another, all the while while helping each other's fires to remain. For if our body is a matchstick, then the church is a whole book, planted in cultures and climates, throwing up smoke signals in every cranny and nook. And if the church is a matchbook, then each country may as well be a box, ready to be set on fire as each church is sent in groves and flocks. And if each country is a matchbox, then why shouldn't the world also be a sphere full of matches with phosphorus heads ready to be set on fire if we would just change our desire to stop being a converter and become a discipler, to share our lives, not just a list of facts, to take people down Golgotha's road, not just through our newest tracks, to stay with new brothers face to face, not just presenting our backs, to present God's word as living bread, not just bound paper found in stacks, to live out what it says in the book of Acts, to not just know but to be known, to create a new society, not just be culture's clone, to share in common what we own, and to see each believer fully grown. We will be lovingly bridal, culturally archetypal, decreasingly idle, and increasingly tribal for there will be one mark in us which shall be all too vital and that will be our call our call to make disciples so let's commit every thread of our existence from our phosphorus head to our wooden legs to take the gospel's flame over any distance to burn with holy fire regardless of resistance to make discipleship not an option but an everlasting insistence until we see evangelism turn from coercion to coexistence, then we may see as we burn side by side that it is for the world that God came, and for each matchstick he'll call that he died.